Hello, everyone. Welcome to my mini lecture. Today, we're gonna learn one bird, one road, and tea cultural transmission. China is the first country in the world to discover, cultivate, and utilize tea. The data shows tea originated in China as early as 5,000 years ago. Our ancestors discovered that tea has the effect of detoxification. China is the hometown of tea. After a long historical journey, tea has taken root in more than 50 countries in the world. Tea has become one of the three most popular long alcoholic beverages in the world. So, how does tea spread? According to the research of historians, the spread of tea was closely related to politics, economy, transportation, natural conditions, and other factors at that time. From a biologic point of view, species generally expand and spread along the flow direction of rivers. From Yunnan, Sichuan, Shanxi, Henan, Anhui, Hubei, Hunan, Zhejiang, Fujian, Guangdong, Guangxi, Hainan, and so on. The spread of tea in China can be roughly summarized as follows. Tea studied from the origin of southwest China, spread along the Changjiang River Basin, then spread to the north through the Grand Canal, and then went deep into the northwest minority areas through border, trade, and other channels. So, let's take a look at the way of word spread of Chinese tea. It can be divided into four routes. Number one, tea road for Zen. The Buddhism Zen spread to Korean and Japan in Tang and the Song dynasties. Number two, tea road by sea. In the early Qing dynasty and after the Opium War, Chinese tea, Wu Yi tea, was shipped by sea to Europe and America by sea and the southeast port. Number three, Camel Road in northern part of the country. In the early Qing dynasty, Chinese tea, especially Wu Yi tea, went from Nan to Russian and Eastern Europe through the grass land of northern Sibei. Number four, Tea Horse Road. It began in the Tang and the Song dynasties, and even in the Ming and the Qing dynasties, and the early Republic of China, Sichuan Tea and the Yunnan Tea went to Tibet, West Asia, South Asia, and Southeast Asia. So, let's see number two, Tea Road on the Sea, Europe and America. In order to promote the state and the development of foreign trade, Zheng He visited the West, the South Ocean, and Indian Ocean today. From Yongle three years to Xuande eight years, and reached the places of Java, Southeast Asia, India pollution, and Arabia Peninsula, further to the east coast of Africa. Zheng He's fleet in front of China, tea, silk, gold, and silver, which are used to exchange for the rural treasure of Asia and Africa. Zheng He went to the West seven times, which made Chinese tea widely known in Asia and Africa, and had a positive effect on the spread of Chinese tea. In the early 16th century, Portugal opened a new route to bypass Africa. 
Portuguese colonial forces also extended from Africa to Asia. In 1553, Portuguese people gained Macau's right of residence. Then, the Dutch, British, French, American, and Russian powers came to China. These colonists in the lane of explorers, missionaries, and turned the mainland of China and became interested in Chinese tea. Then to drink tea, recorded tea is known to us. At the end of the 16th century, Western Europe gradually realized that there was a peculiar beverage called tea in China. In 1886, the foreign sales volume of Chinese tea reached 134,000 tons, got a high record. When Chinese tea was into the UK, there is a British afternoon tea. Afternoon tea is a British food tradition of setting down for an afternoon trade of tea, sandwiches, scones, and cake. Afternoon tea is served around 4 p.m. When afternoon tea became fashionable in the early 19th century thanks to the Anna, the Dukes of Bedford. It was never intended to replace dinner, but rather to fill in the long gap between lunch and dinner and a time, when dinner was served as late as 8 p.m. Lifestyles have changed since those times and afternoon tea is now a treat rather than a stop gap. Let's see, in 1689, China and Russia signed the Treaty of Lubchow, and Chinese tea entered Russia. In 1727, China and Russia signed the Boundary Treaty of Chaktu, which determined that Chaktu was the place of mature market between China and Russia, Zhangjiakou, Hebei province, then sent cameras to Moscow via Inner Mongolia and Outer Mongolia for trading, which is the way for Chinese tea to go to Eastern Europe by land. So let's see number four, the Tea Horse Road. Today, the so-called Tea Horse Asian Road refers to the Asian trade road of tea in southwest China along the Jingsha River, Nanchang River, Lujiang River. Penduan Mountains, to the Qinghai Tibet Plateau, and to India, Nepal, Myanmar, Thailand, Laos, and Vietnam in South Asia. The transportation mode of the caravan on the Asian tea horse road is that people drive mules and horses to trek in the high mountains and valleys which forms the characteristics of the Asian tea horse road. Tea from the Han Dynasty is exchanged with horses, mules, wool, sheep hide, medicine materials from Tuba and jewelry and local products from South Asia are traded on the Asian tea horse road. The ancient Sichuan Tibet Two Horse Road is very dangerous. It starts from Ya'an and passes through Wuding. The whole journey is 275 kilometers. It goes up and down Erlang Mountain and crosses the Dadu River. The tea bags are carried by manpower and carried by mules and horses. It takes 15 to 18 days from Kangding to Lasha, 
there are 56 post stations and 81 Tangpu, 2450 kilometers for a year's walk through one bird, one road of tea culture spread. Chinese tea blossoms all over the world. British people like to drink rich taste of black tea and add milk and sugar to the tea. The upper class set up family tea rooms, collected the displayed valuable tea sets. Japanese tea ceremony of Jian Cha Dao and Mo Cha Dao tea ceremony and carried out a ratio of adequate education and moral cultivation by drinking tea. Africans like to drink mint green tea. Turks like to drink black tea with sugar. Americans like instant tea and German like flower tea. Today, we have learned one bird, one road, the spread of Chinese tea culture and the tea drinking custom of world tea culture. Let us think about it. If a friend comes from Morocco, what tea should we serve him?